Let's now talk about some of the new Pokemon that can be found in an Italy-based region. With so much history and culture to Italy, I wound up having a lot of different places and things to draw upon for new Pokemon ideas. Some of the things I looked to for inspiration were the real-life animals that live in Italy, creatures from Roman mythology and legends, and I even looked a little bit at Italy's renaissance period for new Pokemon ideas too. In the end, I came up with 37 new Pokémon that could inhabit the region. 9 regional variants, 16 common Pokémon, 3 starter Pokémon with their evolutions, 2 legendaries, and 1 mythical Pokémon. As always, I'll make sure to go over what the Pokémon is based on, its typing, and what abilities it could have as well. Alright, let's kick this section off officially and begin with possible regional variants that could be in an Italy Pokemon region. Now as always, I have to clarify that at this point in time we have no idea if regional Pokemon variants, such as Alolan forms, will continue on with the franchise moving forward. Assuming they do, however, and that we'll continue to see awesome versions of Pokemon that have adapted to different regions and environments, these are all the ideas I have for possible Italian regional variants. Okay, so first up, we have regional variants for Skiddo and Go-Goat that are pure ice type and are based on the Alpine Ibex. The Alpine Ibex is a wild goat found throughout the snow-covered Alps and is great at traversing the rugged and mountainous terrain of its habitat. I thought having ice type variants of the Skiddo line would be a great way to reference not only this mountain climbing goat and the snowy environments found in northern Italy, but also helps show how close this Italy region and the nearby Kalos region would be by giving a Kalos native Pokemon a regional variant. For their abilities, they would have Thick Fat, which halves the damage they take from fire and ice type attacks, and they'd also have Slush Rush, which boosts the Pokemon's speed if the weather is hailing. The next regional variant is a Bug Grass type variant of Heracross based on the Rosalia Longicorn. This is a beetle found within Italy's forests, and is often recognized by the fact that it feeds off of the pollen and flowers and makes its home in trees and bark. As you can tell, this is a type of beetle that's very in tune with foliage and flora, and I thought giving Heracross, one of Pokemon's resident beetle Pokemon, a grass bug type variant to represent this worked out surprisingly well. For its ability, I think it could have Sap Sipper. Next up, I'm getting a little bit crazy here, but I've actually created a regional variant for one of my original Pokemon in another region. In my England Pokemon region, I introduced Peblet and Mudruff, which were Pokemon meant to embody the idea of the Roman invasion of England. And considering Italy is the home of the Romans, I felt it would be appropriate to give my own Fakemon regional variants. Previously, they were both ground-type Pokemon, but their Italian regional variants are actually pure steel types. Their designs are more reminiscent of Roman gladiator armor and their typing is meant to reference how the Romans were fierce warriors who used steel weapons. Their abilities this time around are steel worker as well as heavy metal. The next group of new Pokémon to get regional variants is the Spritzy line, in which they become Dark Poison types. For these variants, I was heavily inspired by Spritzy and Aromatease's original design inspiration, which is loosely inspired by the Plague Doctors in France and Italy during the time of the Black Plague, but I took it in a slightly different direction. While the original Spritzy line is meant to embody more of the fragrances that Plague Doctors carried with them to hopefully not catch the plague, I wanted this Italian regional variant to more so represent the actions a Plague Doctor would take to try and heal somebody. These variants' whole vibe is that they want to help and heal other Pokémon, but they use very experimental and somewhat harsh methods to do so. They emit a pungent odor that supposedly helps some Pokémon recover, and they're very adept at creating their own potions which can either help or hurt people depending on the situation. Their ability would also tie into the idea of a Plague Doctor, and they would have a brand new one called Quarantine, which makes it so that any Pokémon with a status condition cannot be switched out as long as Spritzy or Aromatease are on the field. The final variants I thought of for the region are Fire Ghost type variants of Yamask and Kafagrigus. These variants are inspired by many of the large Roman coffins that have been unearthed over the years, and their partial fire typing comes from the idea of Pompeii. We talked about this in the location section, but Pompeii was an old Roman town that sat at the base of the volcanic Mount Vesuvius, before it erupted and covered Pompeii in debris. Maybe this is kind of morbid, but I thought it would be interesting for these partially fire-type Yamask and Kafagrigus variants to be born from a Mount Vesuvius-type eruption within the region. I won't go into graphic details, but after the Pompeii-inspired area of this region was destroyed by a volcanic eruption, these Pokémon suddenly appeared in the area. For these variants' abilities, I think Magma Armor, which prevents the Pokémon from becoming frozen, could fit well, and then they would also have Mummy as a hidden ability. 
Switching over now to the next category of new Pokemon for this region, we come to the common Pokemon. These are the new Pokemon you would see all throughout your journey in the Italy region and aren't quite as rare as a legendary or even a starter Pokemon. The first Pokemon to talk about is a creature and its evolution based on the invention designs made by the legendary Renaissance man Leonardo da Vinci. While da Vinci was an accomplished artist during Italy's Renaissance period, he also had many interests beyond just the physical arts. He made music, wrote poems, studied math and literature, and of course designed numerous inventions. This Pokemon line is heavily based on the many flying machine concepts Leonardo made, with the first form being a normal flying type, and where the concept takes a little bit of a right turn from what you might expect is that its evolution adds in a couple elements from the War Machine sketch Da Vinci made and becomes a fighting flying type. For this line's ability, they would have a new one called Redesign, which makes it so that if one of these Pokemon's attacks misses, then their attack stat is raised by one stage. The next line of new Pokemon for the region is the early game bird Pokemon you would encounter on the first couple routes. These Pokemon are based on a bird found commonly in Europe and Italy called the European Bee Eater, which is well known for its inherent need to tunnel and dig. I wanted these Pokemon to reference this bird's earth-inclined nature, so I decided that this avian Pokemon line would actually start out as a pure ground type, and then by its final evolution would become a ground flying type Pokemon. I thought this was a really cool way to reference the Bee Eater's real-life digging characteristics and also do something a little bit different with the early game bird of the region. Ability-wise, these Pokémon would rock a new one called Pecking Order, which increases the damage they do to Bug-type Pokémon. Next up, we have a Water Ghost-type Pokémon based on a Basking Shark. This is a shark commonly found in the Mediterranean Sea that has a very unique look to it, where it has a massive gaping mouth with gill rakers inside that it uses to filter feed and catch plankton to eat. Originally, the basking shark Pokemon I had for this region was a pure water type, but as I continued to develop the region, I wanted this Pokemon to be just a little bit more exciting. I decided to give it a secondary typing of Ghost, which isn't really based on anything specifically, but I thought a spectral shark that filter feeds off of human and Pokemon souls sounded horrifyingly awesome for this Italian Pokemon region. For its ability, this Ghost Shark would have a brand new one I named Spectral Filter, which makes it so that any attacks this Pokemon makes against an organic Pokemon, meaning something made out of living matter, have a life-stealing effect to them. Moving on, we come to a Pokemon and its evolution inspired by the Caladrius, which is a bird in Roman mythology that lives in a king's house and is said to heal people by taking their sicknesses into itself and then dispersing them. For this Pokemon line's ability, and this is probably pretty obvious, but they would definitely have Healer, which will let the Pokemon cure an ally's status condition. Coming up next, we have one of my favorite new Pokemon in the region, which is a giant normal dark type monster based on a Bodilisk. The Bodilisk is a creature from Italian folklore that looks somewhat reminiscent of a goat, albeit a very scary and monstrous one, and is said to live in a large valley within the Alps mountain range. The legend of the Bodilisk is pretty long and extensive, so I won't go through the entire thing, but to summarize it briefly, the Bodilisk is a monster that lives in the woods and is said to constantly annoy the local people of the valley. Once a year, the locals get so fed up by the obnoxious nature of the beast that they capture it and bring it back to their village so they can engage in many activities with it. So such as having a duel with the creature, reading the Bodilisk speech, which is comprised of gossip about the town, and then finishing up by having a large feast and dance. After this, the Bodilisk is set free to once again annoy the village until next year when it is captured once more. That's an incredibly compact overview of the Bodilisk, and as you might have guessed by the art on screen right now, the obnoxious element of it is what I decided to focus on for this Pokémon. The Pokémon version of the Bodilisk is something of a prankster and plays many jokes on humans and Pokémon alike that can really get on your nerves rather quickly. The next two common Pokémon you would see throughout the Italy region are part of the same evolution line and are based on Cacus, a fire-breathing giant in Roman mythology. These Pokémon are slightly different than Cacus, as I turn them into Cyclopes to make them feel more monstrous, but they are pure Fire-type, which is a direct reference to the mythical Roman giant. Ability-wise, they would have Flash Fire, which powers up their Fire-type moves if they're hit by one, and Flare Boost would be their hidden ability. Alright, let's talk about a couple new Pokémon for this region that are actually pretty special because they're the region's fossil Pokémon. I only put one fossil Pokémon in here with its evolution, and the two of them are based on the prehistoric Megadonto Suchus, which was a crocodile-type monster that roamed Italy long ago. 
I didn't want to cross over into territory that some of the official crocodile Pokemon have covered, like Sandile or Totodile, so these fossil Pokemon would be rock grass types and have chlorophyll or strong jaw as their abilities. The final three common Pokemon that would be in this region are all part of the same evolution line, and what more, are the pseudo-legendaries for the game. This line of Pokemon would be very comparable to other pseudo-legendaries out there, such as Garchomp, Dragonite, or Hydreigon, and their stats would be very comparable to them. As far as what these Pokemon are based on, they're heavily inspired by the Hippocampus, which is a mythical water horse within Roman, Greek, and many other mythologies. This creature is often seen in many art pieces from the Renaissance, such as the Trevi Fountain, and has also been used on the coat of arms for things with maritime associations. With ties to Roman mythology, the Renaissance period, plus being being used in modern day things, I thought the Hippocampus could make for a rad pseudo legendary within this region. It would start out as a pure water type, but by its final stage would become a water fairy that's ready to flood its opponents out to sea. Okay, the next section of new Pokemon I want to cover is the region starter Pokemon. These are the Pokemon you receive at the start of the game and would be your very first traveling companion to accompany you through the Italy region. Each of these three Pokemon are based on real life animals found in Italy, but in addition to that, they're each meant to represent a different area of the country. We didn't go over this a ton in the geography section, but Italy is often split up into three sectors, Northern Italy, Central Italy, and Southern Italy. And these starter Pokemon are each meant to embody a different section of Italy and are based on a creature that's common in the area. This will make a lot more sense as we go through everything, so let's hop to it and take a look at the Italy region's fire starter. This starter is a fire type goat and is meant to represent northern Italy. As we talked about earlier, mountain goats are very common in northern Italy, especially in the Alps mountain range, and so I felt like one of the starters being based on an alpine goat made a lot of sense. I felt like it being a fire type was a given, as mountain goats have very aggressive natures and will often fight each other for territory, and this Pokemon line specifically starts out as a pure fire type before getting more and more territorial and aggressive, eventually becoming a fire ground type by its final evolution. For the fire starter's ability, it would have Blaze, which every fire starter has, and its hidden ability would be Rockhead. The second starter of the region is the Water Starter, which represents Southern Italy. This starter is partially based on the Fire Salamander, which is found throughout Europe, and the Pokemon has luminescent patterns in reference to the real-life animal. While I decided not to make this starter a fire type, I did decide to play up the idea of its luminescent patterns and made it so that this starter has an inner electrical power that causes it to glow. By its final form, it becomes a full-on water electric type and uses its long, goopy tongue to drench enemies in a paralyzing saliva. Ability-wise, this Salamander Pokemon line would have Torrent, and its hidden ability would be Volt Absorb. Alright, the final starter for this region is a grass-type bear Pokemon which corresponds to Central Italy. Central Italy is home of the Apennine mountain range, and one of the most prolific Italian animals, the Apennine brown bear, is known to inhabit them, which is where the idea for the starter came from. It would be a somewhat bulky Pokemon that remains a pure grass type throughout all of its evolutions, which I'm sorry, because I know some people are going to be a little bit disappointed by that, and for its abilities, it has Overgrow normally and Tough Claws as a hidden ability. Looks like we finally arrived at the last group of new Pokémon for the region, the Legendaries. These are the Pokémon that stand high above the rest of the Pokémon in the region, not necessarily in terms of stats, but also in overall importance to the Pokémon world in this Italian region. So let's wrap up the new Pokémon section in style and take a look at the possible Legendaries that could be in this region. So the two big legendaries for this Italian region are tied heavily to ancient Rome. One of them is based on a prominent symbol within Rome, which we'll talk about in a second, while the other is inspired by a creature from an ancient legend about the founding of Rome. This is the one I wanted to talk about first, and so you get a better idea of where the inspiration came from, I'll briefly go through the legend of Rome's founding. Okay, so in Roman mythology, there's a legend about two brothers named Romulus and Remus, who are the grandnephews of a king named Amulus. Fearing that Romulus and Remus would eventually overthrow him, Amulus ordered them to be killed, and so the twin brothers were abandoned in the wilderness by the river Tiber. They were eventually saved by Tiberinus, the god of the river, and through the help of many other individuals, they were cared for and lived to adulthood. There's a lot more to this legend, such as when Romulus and Remus kill Amulus and set out to build their own city named Rome before a disagreement between the brothers formed, which caused Remus to be killed, but the inspiration for the legendary I mentioned earlier was actually within the first part of the story. 
During the years Romulus and Remus were being cared for, one of the beings that helped and cared for them was a she-wolf. Romulus and Remus were said to have nursed from the creature, and this is by far the most well-known story from the legend of Rome's founding. Due to the she-wolf's importance in this story and that, when you think about it, she basically helped create Rome by saving Romulus and Remus, I felt like this creature would make for a great inspiration for an Italian region legendary. Its typing would be ground steel, and its history within the region is that it's helped people construct cities and build civilizations peacefully for thousands of years. To reference the mythical she-wolf's helpful nature, this legendary would have a brand new ability I'm calling Maternal Protection, which allows the wolf to create a barrier as it is being switched out that the next Pokemon called in can use. This barrier increases the Pokemon's defense stat by two stages and their special defense by one. Alright, moving over to the second legendary of the region, we have a monster that is practically the polar opposite of the She-Wolf Pokemon, at least in terms of what it represents. It's based on an eagle, which was a very important symbol to ancient Rome, being used on flags and even being carried into battle by the Roman Legion, and this Pokemon is also meant to embody the idea of imperialism. Imperialism is an ideology that the ancient Roman Empire very clearly abided by, and basically it's the idea of building civilizations by conquering others, or forcing countries to submit to your rule. Ancient Rome was very good at this, as there was a point in time when most of Europe was under Roman control, and this legendary is meant to represent that kind of aggressive takeover philosophy. Its ability would also help reinforce this Pokemon's need for combat and would be a new one called Gladiator. This ability works exactly like the Moxie ability does, and whenever this battle-thirsty eagle KOs a Pokemon, its attack stat is raised. Alright, the final legendary Pokemon in this region is actually a mythical Pokemon inspired by Italy's Renaissance era sculptures. This Pokemon would be a rock ground type and what makes it so special is that it was supposedly the big inspiration behind this Italy region's artistic movement. This Pokemon has the ability to manipulate earth and stone at will and long ago many famous artists in the region saw this monster create beautiful sculptures and were so inspired by it that they set out to try and create their own art. For its ability it would have serene grace. Okay, so one really quick thing I wanted to bring up regarding these region's legendaries is that I did something kind of different with them in the story section because I made the mythical of the region the focus of the main story, while the eagle and she-wolf have more of a presence in the post-game. We'll be going over this extensively in the story section, which is coming up next, but I wanted to give you guys an early heads up that I changed things around a little bit with this region, but I think it all really comes together and helps reinforce the main themes and ideas that play out within the region's narrative. And these are all the new Pokemon I think could be in an Italy Pokemon region. There's quite a lot of them, but I really wanted to try and represent a lot of different facets pertaining to Italy. There's Pokemon based on Roman mythology, some that are inspired by the Renaissance era, and a lot that are just based on animals within present day Italy too. Hopefully I was able to do the animals and creatures of Italy justice and make some cool Pokemon for this region.